Hello there. Today it is hot down here in South Texas, folks, but we are grilling and it's the thrill of the grill summertime, guys. And I tell you what we're doing today is I'm doing a fantastic smoked meatloaf. Guys, it is going to be wrapped in bacon and it's going to be stuffed. If you want to learn how to make a fantastic stuffed meatloaf on your pellet grill, stick around because I'm going to show you how. I am Chef Johnny. This is Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine, and we are doing a fantastic smoked meatloaf today. Guys, we're going to wrap it in bacon, and then we are going to put a stuffing in it, and that stuffing is going to be a creamy goat cheese. It's going to be a fantastic meatloaf, and also along with it, I'm doing a great barbecued cabbage today, and you're going to want to see that. I'm going to put some clips in here of it. It is going to have its own video start to finish so you can see this barbecued cabbage. But first, we're going to start with the meatloaf. So come in here. Let me show you how we make it. I've got some fantastic hamburger 8515 mix. Guys, this is from Chapman Meats. You've heard me talk about them before. Some fantastic grass-fed beef made right here in Texas. They finish them at the end with a great uh, grain ration at the end. So they're good. They got good marbling and a fantastic flavor. So that's what we're going to use today to make up our meatloaf. This is a nice five pound chub of uh, meat. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take just a little bit over half of it. And I'm gonna leave two pounds for making some burgers with. Inside of that, I'm gonna go with two teaspoons of black pepper, tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons granulated garlic. I've got a small onion diced up. Now, if you wanted to, you could uh, saute these onions, and I'm gonna put some bell pepper in there. You can saute the bell pepper also, just to make them tender. Some people do that, I don't. All that's in there. Next thing I'm gonna drop in, guys, is a tablespoon of basil, just dried basil. We're gonna kind of mix this together, and then we'll show you the other ingredients we get in. Next thing that's going in are three eggs. Gonna drop these eggs in. Gonna add some moisture to our so add some moisture to our meatloaf. Help it bind together also with our breadcrumbs. All right, those are ready to go. Put them there. Start mixing that in. And then I'm gonna come back on top with some breadcrumbs. Guys, I just had some sourdough bread and it was kind of stale. So I uh, took about three or four uh, slices and uh, put that in there, it's probably two cups. We're gonna play it by ear. When it looks right, I'll quit putting it in, but I got a total of about two and a half cups. Let's see my bread there, I'm gonna put in, oh, about half of it maybe, about half of it. Gonna help bind this meatloaf together. I think that can use, I'm gonna put the rest of this bread in there. I think it'll hold it. Work that in. And to add some richness to this, the last thing I'm gonna add in is some ketchup, guys. I like Heinz, so we got some Heinz here. I don't know, half, three quarters of a cup. It's gonna add a nice richness to this meatloaf. You could use tomato sauce if you don't wanna use ketchup, but I think ketchup just gives it a better flavor. Tell you what, folks, what you might want to do is if you're doing just the meatloaf without the bacon wrap, you want to have a rack to put it on, a real thin rack, a regular rack on a pit, it'll soak through. But with the bacon, that's going to keep that from happening, so we'll be fine that way. So there is my meatloaf mixed well. Let's get it out here and get in our goat cheese. Got a nice creamy goat cheese, it's going to be very good in here. Guys, if you don't care for goat cheese or you don't have any on hand, just use some cream cheese. It'll be perfectly fine to do that. But I think this goat cheese just has a whole lot more flavor to it. I'm gonna enjoy it much more than if I just use regular cream cheese on here. And guys, that's just eight ounces is what that is. It's in. Close it up. And 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go stick this in the uh, freezer real quick, let it firm up some, and then we'll come out here and wrap it in bacon. Time to get this meatloaf wrapped up in bacon. I just got some regular bacon, guys. Uh, when I'm wrapping in bacon, I usually do not use a thick slice bacon. I just use a regular, regular size slices. But we're gonna lay these out on here. And what I really want these to do is, is cover that bottom so that bottom doesn't go down through my grates. That is really what I'm looking for. Prettier presentation would be draping it over the front, but I don't have a whole lot of bacon. And this is gonna be a pretty big meatloaf, guys. Now, if you wanted to do a, a bacon weave, you could do that. All right, so we can pick this up, put it on our bacon, and that is just long enough. As you can kind of see, guys, here, it's gonna go around, but yeah, not long maybe as you'd like it to be, but main thing is to keep it from dropping through those grates, right? Or we could cook it on a rack. There we go, that looks good. Now we want another layer of flavor. I always talk to y'all about layering flavors so y'all can hear about that. And we're going with some uh, cow shake from Uncle Steve's. Making this an Uncle Steve's party tonight. Putting it on our cabbage. We're also putting it on this meatloaf. You don't have to add this, but with the bacon, I think it's nice to have a little flavor. And a little barbecue flavor never had hurt us. That's good. Let's get this on the outlaw smoker. Time to get this meatloaf off. We're about two hours and 40 minutes into this cook. Gonna check it out. Looking for that 160. We're at 162 there. About 175. This is the hotter end. So it's ready to go. Maybe I could have flipped it part of the way through, evened it out some, but it's still gonna be fine. That is looking pretty. Look at that. Man, that is a great looking meatloaf. We just have to let it rest for a little bit. Right now it's very, very hot. We're gonna give it about 10, 15 minutes to rest. And after it rests, we're gonna slice it, show you how it is, and we'll show you that uh, cabbage and let you see how it turned out. Gonna open this up, let y'all see inside of it. See how that looks. Look at that. Well, if you'll look at that, you can see a nice smoke ring there along the edges. Go about a bacon width, right? Slice that off. Meatloaf is still juicy. Look at that goat cheese in there. It is gonna taste wonderful. That is beautiful. I'm gonna slice that and we're gonna get a taste of this. There you have it guys. Beautiful, beautiful meatloaf. Hope you give it a try. Hey, and go check out Dogfather. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link for him below. He has one stuffed with cream cheese on his channel. I was with him at T-Roy's when he did that one. It was wonderful. Thought I'd do it and step it up a notch with a little bacon and also a little goat cheese just to give that extra flavor to push it over the top. But hey, go check him out, guys. Great channel, great guy over there. I think he just hit 100,000 subscribers not too long ago, so he's got a channel on the move. Y'all gonna wanna see him if you never have before. But today, we're gonna give this a try. Just look at that. Man, I tell you what, guys, this is moist. It is gonna be tender. It is gonna be a fantastic bite. That goat cheese is gonna add a tremendous amount to a wonderful, wonderful 
meatloaf recipe. And guys, if you don't want the goat cheese or you don't want the cream cheese, just make the meatloaf. This is a great meatloaf recipe standing alone by itself, but enough talking. Let's give this a try. Mm. Guys, let me tell you. That cheese is wonderful, a great meatloaf, bacon wrapped, and of course, the uh, cow shake up on top of it from Uncle Steve's shake. Give Uncle Steve a, a, a shout out, tell him Chef Johnny sent you over there, guys. Put a link below where you can find him, get him online, or you can find him at Bucky stores if you're down here in Texas. But this made up a fantastic meatloaf. Thanks for stopping by, always do appreciate it. Remember to check out all my affiliates down below and the people that sponsor my channel, like Scree, Camo, they are great people. My hats are coming from Heads or Tails Hats. Rick Beamster and those guys, they'll, hey, they'll outfit you with a fantastic hat to wear your next rodeo or just Sitting looking good on an afternoon. But hey guys, thanks a lot, appreciate y'all being here. Take care, share us with your friends and family, share us on your social media. And we are gonna see y'all down the road on Texas style barbecue and cuisine. So long everybody. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.